the Thai church serves so many in so many ministries. How much we do is not so important as what truly matters is that we are a living witness of God's love, compassion, and justice in the midst of society. So we value your presence with us today. We thank you and humbly ask you to share your work, words of wisdom to enlighten and guide us as we continue on our way of following God and serving his people as shown to us in the life of Jesus, his son. ประสาทธนาจักในประเทศไทยรับใช้ประชากรพระเจ้าในหลากหลายพันธกิจเรากระทำมากหรือน้อยนั้นไม่ใช่สำคัญแต่การตอบรับความจริงที่ว่าเร
ิเเดเชิญนั่งคนไทยแม้ส่วนใหญ่จะนับถือพระพุทธศาสนาแต่กิจชนมีอิสระในการปฏิบัติศาสนากิจคนไทยหลายคนเปิดใจต่อข่าวดีของพระคิดเจ้าและพระองค์ประทานพระพรแห่งการกลับใจพระสันตบิดรผู้ศักดิ์สิทธิ์ความเรามีความยินดีที่จะนำเสนอประจับพยานชีวิตของเบเนเดตตาจงรักดอนโอลานผู้ฝึกขัดในคณะซิสเตอร์เซเวเรียนที่จะมาแบ่งปันประสบการณ์แห่งความเชื่อของเธอสันตป่าเดเซเบเนลามาจรันซาดีชิตาดีนิไทยโอเฟสโนลาเลดิโจเนบุดิสตาตุตเวียอนุควรเอปเปโตอลาบัวนาโนติสเยดิคริสโตเจสุอาดิโอคีอาโดนาโตลากราเซียเดลาคอนเวสิโอเนเลเซียกราดิโตอัสคอนตาเลดาเตสิโมเนียนซาเดลาเฟเดลิเบเนเดตตาจงรักดอนโอรานเมมโบรเดลาคอนเกรสกัสเซโอเนสูเลเซเวริอาเนสันติสังกราบเรียนพระคารินา Now uh, we hear the witness and testimony of Benedetta. My name is Benedetta j o n g r a k d o n a r a n t i and I was born in 1975. I was, I was baptized in 2012 and am now a postulant in the congregation of the missionaries of Mary, the Zaverians. ขณะธรรมทูตแห่งพระนางมารีซาเวเรียนข้อครัวของดิฉันนับถือศาสนาพุทธทุกคนดำเนินชีวิตตามหลักคำสอนทางพุทธศาสนาเป็นอย่างด
I learned a bit more about Jesus, and I had a chance to hear the gospel. I could feel his word working inside my heart like a blade. I was disturbed by the demands of this word, yet I did not want to give up. However, to keep listening to that word was like playing with fire. The feeling of uneasiness and discomfort kept growing. One night, in a state of uncomfortable half-sleep, I heard a voice that ordered me, Go work elsewhere. Go away from these people. Another voice said, T, I love you. This last voice brought into my heart a lot of serenity and peace. After one year, I asked to receive baptism. The priest refused and asked me to wait some more. The truth is that I was not yet ready to receive the sacrament of baptism. I only wanted that feeling of uneasiness to go away, but I was not asking for God's mercy. Slowly, slowly, I came to realize that baptism is not the fruit of one's merit. We receive it as a gift from God. I attended catechism classes for another year. Only then, kneeling down, did I ask for God's mercy. Grace came to me as a conversion of heart. Through baptism I died and was reborn again in the Lord Jesus Christ. ทรงทําให้จิตใจของดิฉันทมตนและอ่อนน้อมดังที่ท่านประกาศศกเอสิเคียกล่าวว่าเราจะให้ใจใหม่แก่ท่านเราจะใส่ใจใหม่ไว้
ค่ะเราได้ฟังประจักษ์พยานชีวิตเราขอบคุณคุณจงรักนะคะที่มาเป็นสมาชิกขอบคุณพระเจ้าที่ได้รับการสนับสนุนดีมากมากนับต่อไปเราจะได้ฟังสิ่งที่สำคัญที่สุดเป็นหัวใจของพระเจ้าที่เราได้รับการสนับสนุนดีมากมากนับต่อไปเราจะได้ฟังสิ่งที่สำคัญที่สุดเป็นหัวใจของพระเจ้าที่เราได้รับการสนับสนุนดีมากมากนับต่อไปเราจะได้ฟังสิ่งที่สำคัญที่สุดเป็นหัวใจของพระเจ้าที่เราได้รับการสนับสนุนดีมากมากนับต่อไปเราจะได้ฟังสิ่งที่สำคัญที่สุดเป็นหัวใจของพระเจ้าที่เราได้รับการสนับสนุนดีมากมากนับต่อไปเราจะได้ฟังสิ่งที่สำคัญที่สุดเป็นหัวใจของพระเจ้าที่เราได้รับการสนับสนุนดีสิ่งที่พระองค์จะตรัสกับเราโดยเฉพาะสําหรับพระศาสนาจักรคาทอลิกไทยสําหรับกลุ่มที่เป็นพระสงฆ์นักบวชครูคําสอนสามเณรแล้วก็คิสชนสันตุปาเดโอลาลาอินวิตยามอาคอนดีวีได้เล็กคนน้อยอุณาสัวปเตนาเอสตัสเซียวเนขอบคุณพระเจ้าพระเจ้าพระเจ้าพระเจ้าพระเจ้าพระเจ้าพระเจ้าพระเจ้าพระเจ้าพระเจ้าพระเจ้าพระเจ้าพระเจ้าพระเ
Will we allow the Spirit to grant us the freshness that can renew and not simply patch up our life and mission? So let us think of them with gratitude and standing on their shoulders, may we too feel called to be men and women who will help bring about the new life that, Jesus, that the Lord bestows on us. As those called to absolute fruitfulness, called to struggle valiantly for the things that the Lord loves, and for which he gave his life, let us ask for the grace for our hearts to beat in unison with his own. I would even ask you to be wounded by that same love, to have that same passion for Jesus and for his kingdom. Here we can ask ourselves, how do we cultivate apostolic fruitfulness? Benedetta, you spoke of how the Lord first attracted you to himself by beauty. And you can ask yourselves that question and respond in your own heart. It's not easy but it's clear that you have a good will. Benedetta, you spoke of how the Lord first attracted you to himself by beauty. It was the beauty of an image of Our Lady whose special gaze pierced your heart and made you want to know her better. Who is that woman? It had nothing to do with words, abstract ideas, or cold syllogisms. It all started with a beautiful look that captivated you. What great wisdom was hidden in your words. Let us be alert to beauty, to a sense of wonder, capable of opening up new horizons and raising new questions. A consecrated life, incapable of openness to surprises, is only half a life. To the grace the joys and, and sorrows of the surprises. And now the, the Pope's uh, brief off-script uh, words are, are being translated in Thai for the, for the audience. Tam hai rau tuk tuk wan, tin ten, tam hai rau tuk wan, mi arai mai, 
เพราะฉะนั้นก็ต้องพยายามที่จะถึงจุดนี้เพื่อจะเป็นนักบวชที่ดี El Señor no nos llamó para enviarnos al mundo a imponer obligaciones. The Lord did not call us and send us forth into the world to impose obligations on people. Or lay heavier burdens than those they already have, which are many. But rather to share joy, a beautiful, new, and surprising horizon. I really like the words of Benedict the Sixteenth, which I consider not only true but also prophetic for our times. The Church does not grow by proselytizing but by attraction. Proclaiming Christ means showing that to believe in and to follow Him is not only something right and true, but also something beautiful, capable of filling life with new splendor and profound joy, even in the midst of difficulties. Quoting Evangelii Gaudium. This means we are not afraid to look for new symbols and images, for that particular music, which can help awaken in the Thai people the amazement that the Lord wants to give us. Let us not be afraid to continue inculturating the gospel. Lo repito. No tengamos miedo de querer inculturar el evangelio. I repeat, let us not be afraid to continue inculturating the gospel. Buscar esas nuevas formas para transmitir la palabra. We need to seek new ways of transmitting the word, ways that are capable of mobilizing and awakening a desire to know the Lord. Who is that man? Who are these people who follow a man who is crucified? Preparando este encuentro, pude leer con cierto dolor que para muchos la fe es una fe extraordinaria. I read with some pain that for many people Christianity is a foreign faith, a religion for foreigners. Esta realidad nos impulsa a buscar la manera de animarnos. This should spur us to find ways to talk about the faith in dialect. Like a mother who sings lullabies to her child. With that same intimacy, let us give faith a Thai face and flesh, which involves much more than making translations. It's about letting the gospel be stripped of fine but foreign garb, to let it sing with the native music of this land, and inspire the hearts of our brothers and sisters with the same beauty that set our own hearts on fire. La primera que cautivó con la belleza de su mirada a Benedetta. I encourage you to pray to Our Lady. To the one who, by the beauty of her gaze, first captivated Benedetta, and say with childlike confidence, obtain for us now a new ardor born of the resurrection, that we may bring it to all the gospel of life which triumphs over death. Give us a holy. To seek new paths, that the gift of unfading beauty may reach every man and woman. Again, quoting Evangelii Gaudium. Mary's gaze impels, impels us to look where she looks, to turn our eyes to that other gaze, and to do whatever He tells us. His is a gaze that captivates, because it is able to penetrate appearances, to find and celebrate the authentic beauty present in every person. It is a gaze that, as the Gospel teaches us, shatters all determinisms, fatalisms, and standards. 
where many saw only a sinner, a blasphemer, a tax collector, an evildoer, or even a traitor. Jesus was able to see apostles. Such is the beauty that his gaze invites us to proclaim, a gaze that transforms and brings out the best in others. Pensando en el comienzo de la vocación de tantos de ustedes, ¿cuántos en su juventud participaron en las actividades de jóvenes que querían vivir el Evangelio? As for the first stirrings of your vocation, many of you in your early years took part in the activities of young people who wanted to put the gospel into practice and to go out into the cities to visit the needy, the neglected, and even the despised, orphans, and the elderly. Surely many of you were in turn visited by the Lord, who made you see that he was calling you to give everything away, to leave yourselves behind, and in that very moment, in that very movement, to find yourselves. In the faces of those we encounter on the street, we can discover the beauty of being able to treat one another as brothers and sisters. We see them no longer as orphans, derelicts, outcasts, or the despised. Now each of them has the face of a brother or sister redeemed by Jesus Christ. This is what it is to be a Christian. Can holiness somehow be understood apart from this lively recognition of the dignity of each human being? Quotation from Gaudete et Exaltate. I'd like to encourage all those among you who on a daily basis spend your lives serving Jesus and your brothers and sisters, as Bishop Joseph proudly pointed out when introducing you. So many of you manage to see beauty where others see only contempt, abandonment, or an object of sexual gratification. In this way, you are a concrete sign of the Lord's mercy, alive and at work, a sign of the anointing of the Holy One in these lands. Such anointing calls for prayer. Apostolic fruitfulness requires and is sustained by fidelity to deep prayer. How many deep prayer like that of those elderly people who constantly pray the rosary? How many of us have received the faith from our grandparents from seeing them doing their household chores, rosary in hand, sanctifying their entire day? This is contemplation in action, making God part of the little things of each day. It's vital that the church today be able to proclaim the gospel to all, in all places, on all occasions, without hesitation and without fear. As people who every morning in their face-to-face -face conversation with the Lord are sent forth anew. Without prayer, our life and mission loses all its meaning, strength, and fervor. La oración es el centro de todo. 
เราทิ้งกันตะวนาชีวิตคนเราไม่มีความหมายไม่มีกำลังและไม่มีกวามศรัทธาจะฉันเองเฉพาะกามตะวนาที่นำชีวิตคนเราและภารกิจคนเราในทางที่ถูกต้องและมีพลังคือพลังของพระเจ้าในตัวเราเจสีย์สัมปรสิกตุคือหนึ่งในผู้ที่เป็นมิตรของพระเยซูคริสต์ซึ่งพระเยซูคริสต์ท่านบอกว่าหนึ่งในผู้ที่เป็นมิตรของพระเยซูคริสต์ซึ่งพระเยซูคริสต์ท่านบอกว่าหนึ่งในผู้ที่เป็นมิตรของพระเยซูคริสต์ซึ่งพระเยซูคริสต์ท่านบอกว่าหนึ่งในผู้ที่เป็นมิตรของพระเยซูคริสต์ซึ่งพระเยซูคริสต์ท่านบอกว่าหนึ่งในผู้ที่เป็นมิตรของพระเยซูคริสต์ซึ่งพระเยซูคริสต์ท่านบอกว่าหนึ่งในผู้ที่เป็นมิตรของพระเยซูคริสต์ซึ่งพระเยซูคริสต์ท่านบอกว่าหนึ่งในผู้ที่เป็นมิตรของพระเยซูคริสต์ซึ่งพระเยซูคริสต์ท่านบอกว่าหนึ่งในผู้ที่เป็นมิตรของพระเยซูคริสต์ซึ่งพระเยซูคริสต์ท่านบอกว่าหนึ่งในผู้ที่เป็นมิตรของพระเยซูคริสต์ซึ่งพระเยซูคริสต์ท่านบอกว่าหนึ่งในผู้ที่เป็นมิตรของพระเยซูคริสต์ซึ่งพระเยซูคริสต์ท่านบอกว่าหนึ่งในผู้ที่เป็นมิตร For religious priests and catechists, that fervor is nurtured by double encounter with the face of the Lord and with the faces of our brothers and sisters. We too need to find the space to be able to return to the source and drink of its life-giving waters. Immersed in myriad responsibilities, may we always seek that quiet place where we can remember in prayer that the Lord has already saved the world, and that we are asked, in union with Him, to make the salvation felt by all. Nuevamente, gracias por vuestra vida. Gracias por vuestro testimonio. Once again, I thank you for your lives, your witness. And your generous commitment. I ask you, please, not to yield to the temptation of thinking that you are few in number. Instead, think of yourselves as little tools in the Lord's creative hands. He will be writing with your lives the finest pages of the history of salvation in these lands. Please remember to pray for me and ask others to do the same. Thank you. Those were the words of our Holy Father, Pope Francis. With words of encouragement to the priests, religious, and seminarians who are uh, present, both within the church and outside the building, now the Holy Father is going to lead us in a prayer for for vocations, and this is. Adapted from the Holy Father's own message on the 51st World Day of Prayer for Vocations. Lord of the Harvest, bless young people with the gift of courage to respond to your call. Open their hearts to great ideals and to great things. Inspire all your disciples to mutual love and giving. For vocations blossom in the good soil of faithful people. Instill those in religious life, parish ministries, and families with the confidence and grace. To invite others to embrace the bold and noble path of a life consecrated to you. Unite us to Jesus through prayer and sacrament, so we may cooperate with you in building your reign of mercy and truth, of justice and peace. Amen. Amen. ที่สบไปนะเป็นบทโทนาเพื่อกระแสเรียกนะคะที่สมเด็จพระสันตปาปาได้สวดต่อไปพระสันตปาปาจะอวยพรนะคะพวกเราทุกทุกคนขเตรียมเวลายี่สิบหกค่ะ and the apostolic blessing
Nostro, in nomine Domine. Benedica Vos Omnipotente, Pater, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Amen. Affidiamo la nostra vita al Signore Gesù. Chiediamo la forza per poter vivere fedeli al suo insegnamento con l'incanto la via di Gesù. Da già ho parlato con due cani. And the Holy Father, uh, at the conclusion of this event, is presenting the sanctuary with a beautiful uh, golden monstrance. Father will now, uh, amid some traditional songs, uh, descends from the sanctuary area. He'll be meeting with bishops here in just a few moments, uh, but in the meantime, he has a chance to at least walk through the crowds and shake hands with those. Uh, especially religious men and women uh, who are there to see him. now leaving the church. There's next to me, there's, a, there's actually a, a fair crowd uh, here outside uh, the building. Uh, as with many events, it's hard to find uh, or rather it's difficult to balance the, the need to be inside the churches, inside the sanctuaries, and still find space to accommodate as many people as possible. Uh, so there are, uh, very usually at papal events, there are uh, spaces outside of the buildings themselves where people can gather, where they can get a, a glimpse of the Pope where the Pope is able to, to walk amongst the people and greet them as well. And here, as in other places, there are also large screens set up so that the people can watch the events. And, of course, the Holy Father is uh, moving amongst the crowd and stopping from time to time to, to speak with some individuals. kiss a baby or two and of course the crowd is uh, waving Thai flags and Vatican flags with some colorful umbrellas to keep the sun off again as is uh, pretty customary with uh, popes certainly in the, the, amongst the last few pontificates uh, as the Holy Father does move amongst the people, he does take a few moments and actually spends time uh, greeting individuals. Of course, most of, most of the people that he passes by, um, most he can reach out and touch their hands, but he does stop by uh, briefly from time to time to uh, actually stop and, and visit with people. And that's pretty traditional for the Popes. Uh, we've seen that with Certainly, Benedict the 16th and John Paul the 2nd. 
uh, with Paul VI as well. And with their predecessors, I think, uh, going back many, many years. The Holy Father is now preparing to meet with the uh, Cardinal Archbishop of Bangkok and the Cardinal President of the Federation of Asian Bishops Conferences, the FABC. For the second part of this morning's uh, events. The uh, Cardinal of Thailand is Cardinal Krang Sak. He is going to uh, briefly uh, greet the Holy Father and then we will have the Holy Father's address to the bishops. They are actually receiving the Holy Father in the uh, shrine of Nicholas Bunkert Kitbamrung. Who is the first uh, Thai born martyr priest. He was a catechist who instructed Salesian seminarians, all the while teaching Salesian priests the Thai language. He was actually imprisoned in 1941 when he was accused of collaborating with the French and accused of uh, espionage. And in 1944, he died from tuberculosis after a long period of mistreatment and so he is honored as a martyr. He was ordained in 1926 he was also a missionary in Vietnam His major relics are actually uh, interred under the main altar at the Assumption Cathedral in Bangkok. His cause was begun in 1995 for canonization. After a petition by the faithful of Bangkok, uh, which began some years earlier, His Bamram was, uh, was beatified in St. Peter's Square by Pope St. John Paul II in uh, March of the year 2000, the Holy Year. And for those listening on the radio, uh, we're now seeing images of uh, a group of pilgrims from China. And you can now hear the, the image has switched to the inside of the shrine where the Holy Father is greeting and being greeted by the, uh, the bishops of Thailand and uh, some members of the FABC. Most 
In the name of the bishops of Thailand, this is Colonel Kringsak. of Asian Bishop Conferences, I welcome you to Thailand. We are honored by your presence among us here in the shrine of Blessed Nicholas Bunker Kit Bamrung, priests and martyrs. We are gathered with you, Holy Father, to listen as you speak to us of our role as shepherds of the little frog in Asia, the motherland of major traditional religions of the world and of our role in and for the church. Next year, in 2020, the Federation of Asian Bishop Conferences will celebrate its 50th anniversary with a general assembly here in Bangkok. The theme will be FABC 2020, journeying together as peoples of Asia. Our aim is to foster solidarity and corresponsibility for the welfare of the church and society in Asia. Among the members of the FABC, we hope that this celebration will contribute to the new evangelization by enabling our lives, actions, and words to bear witness to Jesus and to the gospel. As bishops of Thailand in particular, we wish to dedicate ourselves in the spirit of fraternal dialogue to the service of our Asian brothers and sisters, especially the poor, and those who design to know Christ and seek his truth. We decide also to be a presence of, for peace and reconciliation in this region, which has known many conflicts, displacement of people, and the scourge of human trafficking. The church in Thailand wants to show to the world how society can be when the gospel and the spirituality of communion are put into practice. In this way, it will be possible for the disciples of Christ in Thailand to overcome social divisions. Holy Father, on behalf of my brother's bishops, I thank you again for being with us today and for your encouraging words to guide us in our journey to, together that we may be living icons of the love of God for his people in Asia. We ask your blessing upon us and upon all of our communities. Thank you, Your Holiness. That was Cardinal Francis Xavier Krinsak Koetawanich, the Archbishop of Bangkok. He's also the Vice President of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Thailand. The Bishops' Conference was uh, instituted in 1965 and is composed of the bishops of the two archdioceses and nine suffragan dioceses in the country. Now the Holy Father is going to be speaking. It's very interesting to see the, the bishops very in attentive. One of them is already got pen in hand, ready to take notes. And it looks like we have a little difficulty with the mic once again. There we go. I thank His Eminence Colonel Francis Xavier Krinsak Kortovanich for his kind words of introduction and welcome. I'm happy to be with you and to share, even briefly, your joys and hopes, your projects and dreams, but also the challenges that you face as pastors of God's holy and faithful people. Thank you for your fraternal welcome.
Our meeting takes place today at the Shrine of Blessed Nicholas Blunkard Kitbamrum, who devoted his life to evangelization and catechesis, forming disciples of the Lord, primarily here in Thailand, but also in part of Vietnam and along the border with Laos, and who crowned his witness to Christ with martyrdom. Let us place our meeting under his watchful gaze so that his example may inspire us with a great zeal for evangelization in all the local churches of Asia so that we may increasingly become missionary disciples of the Lord enabling his good news to spread like a fragrant balm throughout this great and beautiful continent. I realize that you're making plans for the 2020 General Assembly of the Federation of Asian Bishops Conferences, which will mark the 50th anniversary of its foundation this is a fitting occasion to revisit those shrines where the missionary roots that left their mark on these lands are preserved to be guided by the Holy Spirit in the footsteps of our first love and to welcome with parousia a future that you yourselves must help develop and create. In this way, both the church and society in Asia will benefit from a renewed and shared evangelical outreach in love with Christ and capable of bringing others to share in that same love. You are living in the midst of a multicultural and multi-religious continent endowed with great beauty and prosperity, but troubled at the same time by poverty and exploitation at various levels. Rapid technological advancements can open up immense possibilities that make life easier, but can also result in the growth of consumerism and materialism, especially among young people. You have taken upon yourselves the concerns of your people, the scourge of drugs and human trafficking, the care of great numbers of migrants and refugees, poor working conditions, and the exploitation experienced by many laborers as well as economic and social inequality between rich and poor. In the midst of these tensions stands the pastor who struggles and intercedes with his people and for his people. The memory of the first missionaries who preceded us with courage, joy, and extraordinary stamina can help us take stock of our present situation and mission from a much broader and more transformative perspective. In the first place, that memory frees us from the belief that times past were always more favorable or better were always more favorable or better for the proclamation of the gospel. It also helps us to avoid taking refuge in fruitless discussions and ways of thinking that end up making us turn in on ourselves, paralyzing any kind of action. Let us learn from the saints who have gone before us who confronted the difficulties of their own day 
Quoting Evangelii Gaudium. Let us cast aside everything that has stuck to us along the way and that makes it harder for us to press forward. We know that some ecclesial structures and mentalities can hamper efforts at evangelization. Yet even good structures are only helpful when there is a life constantly driving, sustaining, and assessing them. Ultimately, without new life and an authentic evangelical spirit, without the Church's fidelity to her own calling, any new structure will soon prove ineffective and detract from our important ministry of fervent prayer and intercession. As we contemplate missionary progress in these lands, one of the first lessons we learn is to be confident in the knowledge that it is the Holy Spirit himself who goes before us and it gathers us together. He is the first to invite the church to go forth to all those places where new narratives and paradigms are being formed, bringing the word of Jesus to the inmost soul of our cities and cultures. No olvidemos que el Espíritu Santo llega antes que el misionero y permanece con él. The Holy Spirit arrives in advance of missionaries and remains with them. The power of the Holy Spirit sustained and motivated the apostles and countless missionaries not to discount any land, people, culture, or situation. Estaba de antemano incapacitada para recibir la semilla de vida, de felicidad y especialmente... They did not look for places of guaranteed success. On the contrary, their guarantee lay in the certainty that no person or culture was a priori incapable of receiving the seed of life, happiness, and above all friendship that the Lord wants to sow in them. En la realidad. Se zambulleron en esas realidades nuevas, convencidos de la belleza de la que eran portadores. They did not expect a foreign culture to receive the gospel easily. Rather, they plunged into these new realities, convinced that the beauty of which they were the, convinced of the beauty of which they were bearers. Que el evangelio es un don. All life has value in the eyes of the Master. They were bold and courageous because they knew that in the first place the Gospel is a gift to be shared with and for everyone. Doctors of the law, sinners, tax collectors, prostitutes. With and for all sinners, then as now. I like to observe that the mission, even prior to things to be done or projects to be implemented, demands the cultivation of a gaze and a sense of smell. The mission calls for paternal and maternal concern because the sheep is only lost and the shepherd gives it up for lost and not before. Hace tres meses me visitó un misionero francés que trabaja desde hace Three months ago, años en el norte de Tailandia, entre las tribus. From a French missionary y vino con un grupo who, de unas 20, 25 who worked for about 40 years in the northern part of Thailand. Jóvenes. 
He came with a group of about 50 people. All mothers and fathers of families, very young. And he is about 50 years. And they're the first generation baptized. They were there with their children. He gave his uh, he gave his, his whole life for for these people, these fifty people, baptizing their children. No dio por perdida esa oveja, la asumió. Uno de los puntos más hermosos de la evangelización es hacernos cargo de que la misión confiada a la Iglesia As we no contemplate en la proclamación del Evangelio. One of the most splendid aspects of evangelization is our realization that the mission entrusted to the Church does not lie only in the proclamation of the Gospel, but also in learning to believe the Gospel and to let ourselves be laid hold of and transformed by it. This means living and walking in the light of the Word of God that we are charged to proclaim. We do well to remember the words of the great Saint Paul VI. The Church is an evangelizer, but she begins by being evangelized herself. She is the community of believers, the community of hope lived and communicated, the community of brotherly love, and she needs to listen unceasingly to what she must believe, to her reasons for hoping, to the new commandment of love. That's from Evangelii Nunciandi. In this way, the Church enters into the dynamic of conversion proclamation demanded of each disciple. Purified by the Lord, she becomes a witness by vocation, a church that goes forth, unafraid to take to the streets and come face to face with the lives of the people entrusted to her care, is a church able to be open in humility to the Lord. With the Lord, she can experience the wonder of the missionary adventure without the need, conscious or unconscious, to be in the first place, to seek or occupy an impossible place of preeminence. How much can we learn from you who are a minority in many of your countries or regions? Yet have not let yourselves be carried away or corrupted by an inferiority complex or the complaint that you are not given due recognition. So, proclaim, sow the seeds, and don't lose the joy. Dear brothers, in union with Jesus, we seek what He seeks and we love what He loves. Let us not be afraid to make His priorities our own. You are well aware that yours is a church small in numbers and resources, but full of zeal and eager to be a living instrument of the Lord's loving concern for all the people of your towns and cities. 
Your commitment to advance that evangelical fruitfulness by proclaiming the kerygma with words and deeds in the various areas where Christians are present is a striking form of witness. A missionary church knows that its best message is its readiness to be transformed by the word of life, making service its hallmark. We are not the ones in charge of the mission, and even less our plans and strategies. The Holy Spirit is the true protagonist who propels us as sinners who have been forgiven. He constantly sends us forth to share this treasure in earthen vessels. We have been transformed by the Spirit in order to transform wherever we are placed. The martyrdom of a daily and often silent commitment will bear the fruits your people need. This motivates us to develop a very specific spirituality. The pastor is a person who in the first place loves his people deeply and knows their idiosyncrasies, weaknesses and strengths. Mission is at once a passion for Jesus Christ and a passion for his people. When we stand before the crucified Jesus, we see the depth of his love that exalts and sustains us. But at the same time, unless we are blind, we begin to realize that Jesus' gaze, burning with love, expands to embrace all his people. Let us remember that we too are part of this people. We were chosen to be servants, not masters or managers. This means we are to accompany those whom we serve with patience and kindness. Listening to them, respecting their dignity, always promoting and valuing their apostolic initiatives. Let us not lose sight of the fact that many of your lands were evangelized by the lay faithful. So, no clericalism in the mission and much less any effort to clericalize the laity. They, the lay faithful, were able to speak the dialect of their people, a simple and direct exercise of enculturation neither theoretical nor ideological, but the fruit of their zeal to share Christ. De manera particular, los invito a que tengan siempre abierta la puerta para sus sacerdotes. 
la puerta y el corazón. In a particular way, I encourage you always to keep your door open to your priests. The, the door of your heart, first of all. May we always remember that the closest neighbor of the bishop is the priest. Be close to your priests, listen to them, and seek to accompany them in every situation, especially when you see that they are discouraged or apathetic, which is the worst of the devil's temptations. Do so not as judges but as fathers. Uh, take up that paternity, not as managers who deploy them, but as true elder brothers. Create a climate of trust for honest and open dialogue. Seek and implore the grace to show the same patience with them that the Lord, whose patience is so very great, has shown to each of us. Dear brothers, I know that there are many issues you must confront within your communities, both daily and as you look to the future. May we never lose sight of the fact that in that often uncertain future, it is the Lord himself who comes with the power of the resurrection to transform every wound into a fountain of life. Let us look to the future and the certainty that we do not journey alone. The Lord is there waiting for us and inviting us to recognize him above all in the breaking of the bread. Let us beg the intercession of Blessed Nicholas and that of all the many missionary saints so that our people may be renewed with that same anointing. Given the presence here of many bishops from Asia, I take this opportunity to extend my blessing and affection to all your communities and in a special way to the sick and to all who are experiencing moments of difficulty. May the Lord bless, care for, and accompany you always. And please do not forget to pray for me and to ask your communities to do the same. Thank you very much. And a round of applause for Pope Francis from the assembled bishops. And the bishops pray together the Ave Maria. Uh, the angels, excuse me. Echensila Domini. Ave Maria, gracia plena, Dominus Tecum. Benedicta tu mulieribus, et benedicto frutus ventis tu Iesus. Santa Maria, Madre de Dios, 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 Ora pro nobis santa de Genitrix. Gracias en tu banco y sumo domine, mente vos nostri sin funde, que ancha anunciante Cristi Filitu, encarnación en coñovim, 
de pasión y medio de escuchen, a resurrección y gloria en perducamos. Por el Cristo en dominio nuestro. Amén. Gloria a Patria, el Filho del Espíritu y Santo. Por que me eterna en don y domine. Por que cante en paz. Benedica vos, omnipoteceus, Pater, Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. And the Holy Father concludes the Angelus with a blessing of those present. And makes his way to uh, speak with some of the cardinals and bishops. The Holy Father does have a fairly tight schedule. He will be meeting... Uh, next with the members of the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits, in Thailand. That's become a fairly regular uh, part of his journeys abroad. He'll meet with the Jesuits in the country. Of course, before he was Pope, Jorge Bergoglio was a Jesuit. And he is still very close uh, to the order. He does usually meet with uh, Jesuits in whatever country he visits, and uh, usually in a fairly uh, intimate setting. Uh, it's usually a private meeting, but then occasionally we do uh, see the uh, see the discussions that he has with them in print. That's his next uh, meeting this morning. Later, he'll go to Chulalongkorn University, where he'll meet with uh, Christian leaders and leaders of other religions. This afternoon, he's going to the Cathedral of the Assumption, where we, he will have Holy Mass, especially with young people. After the Mass, the Holy Father is expected to bless 25 cornerstones for new churches in Thailand. And then we'll greet members of the Korea in Bangkok. So that's the Holy Father's schedule for today. It is his last full day in Thailand before he travels uh, tomorrow to Tokyo in Japan. Once again, I would like to greet uh, all those listening in on our uh, partner stations, especially Radio Luce, We Are One Body Radio, Catholic Faith Network, Shalom World TV, Salt and Light TV, EWTN TV, Catholic TV, and CBS News. You've been listening to the live English language commentary for the Holy Father's meeting with priests, religious, and seminarians. And immediately after that, the meeting with the bishops of Thailand and member bishops of the Federation of Asian Bishops Conferences. We do thank you for joining, this, joining us this morning, and we invite you to tune back in later today for the meeting with Christian leaders and leaders of other religions, which is our next live broadcast. Thank you once again. My name is Christopher Wells. I've been with you this morning for Vatican News. And as always... Praise be Jesus Christ. Laudator Jesus Christus. Ave mus papa in alem Bergoglio. Francis Franciscus. We are Franciscan Missionaries of Mary. As our name indicates, 
We are missionaries whose lives are centered in the Eucharist, following the way of Francis of Assisi and living Mary's Ecce in fiat every day. The FMMs live and share life together in community, where we seek to live a real communion with each other. We are called and sent to communicate the good news of the gospel in the midst of people to whom